Okay, let's dig into this now with our ABC team of experts. Martha Raddatz back again. Colonel Stephen Ganyard, who served as a fighter pilot during the Gulf War and in Bosnia. And the newest member of our military team, Vice Admiral Robert Harward, a former Navy SEAL, also the Deputy Commander of Central Command. Welcome to all of you. And Admiral Harward, let me begin with you. First of all, welcome uh, to ABC. You were in Afghanistan uh, during this operation. Uh, and this was an, uh, the, the, the history of Afghanistan was a war where the special operators have dominated. Was this film true to the experience? Well, I would say it's very true, and it's very graphic, as you know, but I would tell you the more important issue here, I think, is the dilemma this presents for the special operations community, who's always prided themselves on being the quiet professionals. So while the story needs to be told about these brave men and what happened, they also want to protect their capabilities as they go forward for future missions. So I would tell you this movie does that, but it's very graphic and will be a painful experience not only for the families who have lost members of this war, but also for those who worry about their members forward every day. Colonel Ganyard, the Admiral brings up this Navy SEAL ethos. I want to put it up on the screen right now. I do not advertise the nature of my work nor seek recognition for my actions. Clearly happening here, but it's a way of bringing people inside that experience. It is, and extraordinary uh, stories that, that are being told here because of the extraordinary courage and the, and the virtuous people who've been, who've been fighting these wars for us overseas. So what we see here is something that the Admiral wants to have out there. We need to know about this courage, but he also doesn't want to compromise the capabilities and the procedures that really is their bread and butter. Uh, but Martha, this is not only the only movie right now. I mean, I talked to Peter Berg this summer about how much access he got from the SEALs. We also have Captain Phillips out right now goes deep inside that operation where they took out the, the uh, pirates in Somalia. And, and Captain Phillips, I think, is the most problematic one for revealing tactics, for revealing how the SEALs operate. There are things in there for, for me, you know, covering the Pentagon, and I ask questions about tactics, it's, oh, no, 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 we can't, we can't tell you that. And then you have all these Hollywood movies. You had Zero Dark Thirty, you had Captain Phillips, you have Lone Survivor, which I don't think reveals so many tactics. But the Captain Phillips, where they show you how they listen in on the boats, they, they do all kinds of things in that movie that are really revealing. So I think a question really is, why is Hollywood getting this access? Journalists aren't really getting that kind of access. They, they really have opened the door to Hollywood. Well, and I think the point is that they're always, it's a tough, tough draw to get guys in and through these processes. While a lot of people want to be Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, it's really a tough recruiting process. We had the last 10 years, we put a lot of focus into recruiting. These type of movies inspire young kids to pursue these very challenging and demanding careers. And, and, and one of the questions that also raises, and I'll bring this to you, Colonel again, it is how these special, how the, the role of these special operations forces is going to evolve mm -hmm. as we deal with new challenges, not only the fight against Al Qaeda in the Middle East, but the rise of China. Right. And the, the, the rise of China and how do we fit special operations? Because they've clearly earned a place in the American pantheon of what we are capable of doing around the world. In some ways, you know, we, we spend hundreds of billions of dollars on stealth airplanes and stealth submarines. But now there are satellites everywhere. <clears throat> we live in this ubiquitous era, uh, era of, 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 of satellites seeing everything. So we can't move airplanes, we can't move divisions of people overseas without being seen. But in some ways, the special operators are a stealth ground force because they can be inserted into places that we care about or, or difficult places to get into in a covert manner in ways that won't be seen or, or detected. And, and you've got, George, you've got someone from the Navy and the Marine Corps here. If we had someone from the Army here, they would be arguing that you need those conventional forces. You look at Korea. So th that is a real different side of what we're talking about here. Special operations forces are so incredible and so important now, but, but there's a lot of argument right now that you still need conventional forces. Support. Right, and, and conventional forces are going to take the hit on the budget drawdowns. We're paying twice as much per soldier as we did 20 years ago, and so the natural tendency is to draw down the Marine Corps, draw down the Army, take big cuts. And, and I guess one of the other problems. dangers here, and let me bring this to you, Admiral Harward, and, and, and a specialist for the Council on Foreign Relations wrote about this, um, the, the emphasis on the tactics of the special operators, you risk getting sucked into a permanent game. She called it a permanent game of whack-a-mole. You go out after the bad guys and you're not necessarily fitting into a larger strategy. Uh, well, I think the special operations community fits very well into that uh, strategy because it provides low profile access, which then allows you to do that full range, be it 
go after individuals you need to capture or kill or other missions. So it's low profile, it's a small print, but it gives you access into these areas where you want to influence for a variety of purposes. Martha Rad, it's a world dominated by men. So far, is there, is there a future for women in the Special Operations Forces? Well, I, I think that has really evolved. I mean, I've asked some Navy SEALs, including that one right there, whether women fit in. To me, it's, it's the, and, and I think Steve Ganyard lived through this. As a fighter pilot the, back As a fighter pilot when they were integrating women into combat aviation. And now you've got a community that is more welcoming. But there are physical tests that go along with this. I sort of look at it as, in the people I've talked to, as a tool belt. Look, there's, there are hammers in that tool belt, there are screwdrivers in that tool belt, there are all kinds of things in that tool belt, and if you put them all together, they work really well together, and I think women, and I think most of the special operations senior leadership who I have talked to feel it's time. Great. Back at you, right? <laughs> I would tell you, women have been a part of the special operations community as long as I have. They're not SEALs, they're not Rangers, but they've been part of the community and an integral part that have enabled us to do what we need to do. This last bastion of wearing a trident or becoming a designated Ranger still needs to be worked. I know the special operations community, Admiral McRaven, is looking at this very closely. I think it's going to be very important, though, that if we do this, we have to have a single bar. There can't be standards for women in the most physically demanding special ops jobs. If the bar is set to be this to be a SEAL today, that's going to be the bar that everybody goes out and meets. That's going to have to be the last word today. Thank you all very much. You can see more with Mark Wahlberg and an excerpt from Lone Survivor at abcnews.com slash this week. We'll be right back. And now we honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. This week, the Pentagon released the names of three service members killed in Afghanistan. And that is all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News with David Muir tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow on GMA.